uh, will be a servant of God and a friend to a man. Brian, the PowerPoint, yes. It's a joy to be with you this morning. Our hearts beating in unison and our voices resonating together in praises and our spirit yearning to draw nearer to our Lord and Savior and our Creator. Today we are going to focus on a passage that is so profound and that it has the power to transfer, transform our lives and our relationships. We are going to immerse ourselves in, Philip, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. A passage that speaks directly to the heart of what it means to serve God and one another. I want you to listen carefully as I read these words. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your, your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he is both their masters and yours is in heaven. And there is no favoritism with him. In these verses, we are reminded of the profound call to serve God through selflessness, selflessness, to make sacrifices in service, and to strengthen our relationships through service. We are reminded that our service to others is not just a duty, but a privilege a way of expressing our love for God and for our fellow human beings. We are called to serve, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in this world. And this service is not just about what we do. This world is focused on what? what we do, but about who we are, about the transformation that happens within us when we give ourselves wholeheartedly to God and to others. The essence of our Christian faith is found in the selfless love of Jesus Christ. He came to this earth not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the example that we are called to follow. Here we have pathfinders. We are here what? to follow the footsteps of Jesus. 
To serve God is to emulate His selfless love in our interactions with others. It is about putting the needs of others before our own, about considering others better than ourselves. This is not an easy task. Actually, this is what? Impossible task. Since I am selfish, we are selfish. But it's a task that we are called to undertake with joy and humility. The life of Jesus, his life, was a life marked by selfless service. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and comforted the brokenhearted. He washed the feet of his disciples, a task usually reserved for the lowest of servants. He did all this not out of obligation, but out of love. His love for us was so great that he was willing to lay down his life for us. This is the kind of love that we are called to emulate. How do we do this? How do we serve God through selflessness? Since I am, since we are selfish. The answer lies in the words of Jesus himself. Matthew chapter 22 verse 39 through 37. Jesus tells us that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind. The second is like it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. To serve God through selflessness is to love Him and to love others. It's about showing God's love to the world, to our actions. When we say we love God, I love Jesus, this means to seek Him with all our hearts to desire his presence more than anything else. It means to obey his commands not out of obligation but out of love. Let's a moment. Let's pause just for a second. When your spouse do something for you out of obligation how do you feel do you feel loved I must do it <laughs> but if your spouse your children when they do out of love how do you feel there is connection right there's love and joy. There's strong bond in between two. Even in between two parties. It doesn't just happen. When you come to church, it's not about just service, but your heart, your mind, your attitude before you come to the church. Because we are called serve our Lord. Without this connection with God, we miss everything. Even Pathfinders here, we do all kinds of programs and to get credits, all these things. 
if we don't put our hearts in it. When you grow up 5 years and 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you may not really appreciate all these things, what you have done, because there won't be any connections in between. But when you put your heart in it, when you serve God and when you serve others with, with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, it will help you to grow and it will help develop your characters. One day you will say, it was such a blessing to be part of Pathfinder. And you will be a disciple of Pathfinders. And you will be a master guard. You will be important, practicing important role in the church. You will be the leaders. Not the bosses, but you will be the leaders. You will lead the young people. When we say, I love God. It means to spend time in His Word, to pray without ceasing, and to worship Him with all our heart. It means to give Him the first fruits of our time, our talent, and our resources. To love God is to serve Him with all that we are. We are not going to claim any benefits or credits because we did it out of a love. When we say, I love people, I love neighbors, I love church members, this means to see the need of others and to do what we can to meet them. It means to listen when others speak. To comfort those who are hurting. And to encourage those who are discouraged. When we say, I love our neighbors. I love church members. I love somebody. It means to forgive as we have been forgiven to show mercy as we have been shown mercy, and to extend grace as we have been extended grace. To love others is to serve them as we would serve Christ himself. Serve with joy. Serving God is not a burden, but a privilege. How often am I or are we discouraged? Because there's not much connection between God and us. It's an, it's an opportunity to show his love to the world and to be his hands and feet. It's an opportunity to participate in his work, to join him in the mission of redeeming the world. Serving God is not something we do out of obligation, but out of joy. It's a joy that comes from knowing that we are loved by God. That we are valued by Him. That we have a purpose in His kingdom. We know I, I, our identity. We know where we are going. We know that who is leading our life. Do we have a connection with God every day? Serving with humility. Serving God is not about us, but about Him. 
is not about what we can do, but about what He can do through us. Amen. We focus on God, then focus on ourselves. We don't claim our, our title. We don't claim our name. But we claim our purpose. We claim our creator, our redeemer, and what God can do through me and us. So when we come to church, there's praises of testimony because we lift up our voices to God, not to ourselves. Serving God is not about receiving praise or recognition, but about glorifying Him. How often we are tempted to glorify ourselves or to get credit or recognition or praise. But it's about acknowledge, acknowledging that we are nothing without Him. That we can do nothing apart from Him. That's a worship. Serving God is about humbling ourselves before Him, recognizing our need for Him, and relying on His strength. Ellen White says, The sacrifice of Christ as an atonement for sin is the great true around which all other truths cluster. In order to be rightly understood and appreciated, every truth in the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, must be studied in the light that streams from the cross of Calvary. The cross of Calvary is crucial to Christians not only for his death and resurrection, which are the core values of the plan of salvation, but more so, more so for how he lived his life. Not just how he died, but how he lived. As his children and the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is the life we must follow. Our testimony is not just one day testimony, right? We don't talk about our testimony, what God has done for 10 years ago and 20 years ago, 30 years ago, several decades ago but about how God has done for me and how God has been working through me to others. That that is a testimony. So when we come to the Lord, we are all humbled. No one can claim what we have done. What we have done is very limited. As long as we claim who we are by our righteousness, our own self-righteousness, we can fall immediately. We can learn the lessons from Peter. No one can claim our own righteousness before God. We have only self-righteousness. We need His righteousness. We have very serious challenges. One of them is that we don't want to be a servant. We don't want to be a servant. Since we are born and infants, cradle, kids learn to say what? 
No. We want to be in charge of our life. Instead of yes, we say no. And we say, I don't want to be a leader, but in life, we want to be a leader of our own life. We don't, are, we are not accustomed to say, yes, Lord. Yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. Yes, teacher. We are not used to say yes, but no. But when we come to worship, my attitude and our attitude must be, yes, Lord. This is the spirit of Pathfinder. Yes, Jesus. I will follow your footsteps. I will be a servant of God and a friend to a man. What spirit we need? We need the spirit of Jesus. The purpose of being a disciple is not only to proclaim the good news, the word of salvation, but also to demonstrate the love of God to people who are in need. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, It is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives through Christ Jesus. And in ages long ago, he planned, he planned that we should spend our lives in helping others. Because of our sin, because of our selfishness, this is against our nature. Helping others is not our nature. Unless we are transformed by the Holy Spirit. And He gives us and help us to desire to help others. We need Jesus. How many of us, we need Jesus this morning? This is why service is not an option in Christian servanthood. Servanthood. Service is mandatory. Is more willingness. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. Pathfinders, would you like to follow the footsteps of Jesus? Yes. Amen. Church, would you like to follow the footsteps of Jesus? Amen. We are called, we are commanded to create kingdom values in this world. We are commissioned to become change makers. We are leaders, change makers in our communities. Are you here to serve or are you here to be served? In our attitude, like the world or is like Christ? The example is, has been set. The call is clear. All that remains today is your response, your decision, your commitment. Will you be like Jesus today or not? 